Okay, let's start again. So, uh, so, so now we, we basically have some methods to get a quick estimate of a score for a query sequence against many different alignments in the database, or the best ones. But when do we know that this score is correct? And what, what do we mean correct in this case mean that they are homologous, the sequences we find? Uh, and more important, when is it significant? When is it uh, better than random? So of course, if, if you take any score, you may, if you, even if the sequence has nothing to do with each other, you will always get some parts of the alignments that the sequences are more similar, some parts of them are more different, so you will always get some score. So you need to know, and because they are very big databases, the probability that you find something that is scoring quite well, even when it's uh, 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 by random is quite high. And here we have this what I thought was e-values and p-values. And uh, actually, maybe the best thing to look at is to start here. So basically, if you just take a random set of sequences and you plot this somehow the distribution of the score, so how many sequences pairs of sequences have this score and the score here, you will get something that looks like that. This is local alignment, you can never get a score less than zero, because everything that's zero skips you all, going positive numbers. So it's, and it, but what you see, it's not a Gaussian distribution against some fixed number. It's going to be this was called extreme value distribution. So it's not so unlikely that you find quite high score here. And it's clear that it's not, I mean, you also find low scores, but you never find anything what, equal to zero or lower. So the question is, how likely, if you have a score, if you have an alignment, score here, or here, or here, how likely is it that actually it's not just a random hint? So to do that, uh, we need a few factors. We need to know uh, well, this makes not So we need to know what, 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 what factors are influencing the scores. So the question we ask is basically, um, so what is the probability? Next slide. Yeah. So what is the probability that the random alignment, so two, two random sequences, obtains a score of x or higher, for instance. So this is the p-value, in this case. p-value is uh, almost the same thing, but not exactly. And what factors? So basically, of course, the score depends on the substitution matrix. So if you multiply every number in the substitution matrix by 10, or the score should be 10 times bigger. So of course, it depends on the average score in the substitution matrix. But not only that, it also, uh, well, it, it actually depends on the composition. So if you, if you, if you, all, if your database only have alanines, you have a sequence of all alanines, you're going to have a high score for everything. So you may, and everything is also randomly distributed. So if, if you have a bias towards a lot of alanines, you're going to have a high score bias by random. If, or super fans, whatever. Uh, <laughs> But then it depends also on the sizes. So first, the probability to find 
if you make database files big, or your sequence files as long, the, the probability to find the score of this number doubles. It's just by random, of course. If you have 10% chance to find this in the database, and if you make it twice big, you have 20% chance to find the score like that. Because you have twice amount to search for. So that means that actually you need a bigger score for a bigger. If a database, you need to have a more high score to be significant. So you have the fact factors going to be a couple of factors here, lambda and k, that, that depends on the database and the substitution matrix, and then you have the size of the sequence and size of the database. Uh, so you have a p value here, you can go and give there. Uh, oh, this, is actually so important. this is actually just called p value, but if you skip it. So, uh, what is known, what other people do is you, you <laughs> actually, let's keep the table back. So, you have a score. Uh, so, you have a score. So, this is, by, yes, as you know, the score is just the sum of substitution, substitutions and the gap penalties. So, this is very, by itself, it doesn't say anything because it really depends on the matrix and it depends on the size. Length of the proteins, etc. So, what you want to have is some uh, values. So, no, what you suppose it was p value. So, that's the probability to find an alignment with such a score by chance. Because the lower the better. So, if the probability is very small to have this chance, the chance is very likely that it's not by chance, means that it's most likely something homologous. And as I said before here, this distribution looks like that, not like a random one, normal distribution, but by this distribution. So if you, when you calculate it, you have to take this into account. And you actually end up with this formula here. Uh, the alternative, actually more used method is the p-values, it's the e-values. And that's the number of hits, the number of, of alignments you find by chance when you start dealing with a particular size. So <coughs> it's, it's uh, basically uh, so basically, how many random hits will you find? So it can be less than one, it can be more than one, but it's not, uh, so that's probability, and it, it has some advantage to that. So basically, e value of 10 means that in the database you would find 10 by random with this score. So, so basically, it's very, if it's small, uh, so if it's less than one, it's very unlikely to find it. And actually, if it's small, it's actually identical almost to p-values. Because it's just the way it is. So basically, it's calculated under this set. It also has the same k here, and it's database says in lambda x. So values less than 10 to minus 3, less than 10 to minus 4, e-value is more than the same as the p-value. And somehow, the problem with p-value is that like when it gets close to 1. So what is the probability difference of having uh, 0.1 or 0.12 or something is, is, is quite big, but it doesn't really it doesn't mean mean that much. But even it's much easier to understand that you have uh, a score of uh, uh, score of uh, you would find one hit by chance or ten hits by chance. So this just makes more chance and it's actually a bit easier to calculate. You also get from you also get what's called a bit score, so the basic information and you can calculate that. So that's also a normalized score. But it's using the entropy. So here is basically what you see. If you see this, this is probably this is score. You have an alignment. If you take, as I said, if you take this basically the score, what is probability to find a score higher than uh, a certain cutoff? <coughs> if it looks under that, the log of that. So basically, even if this basically looks like a zero here, it actually keeps on increasing actually linearly by this by the score. So the key thing here is, of course, is the what you have is that the, the e-value is actually this 
n here, the database. Size. So the the reason to consider the, the, the big database you have, the better score or the high uh, you need to have to have a significant hit. So really, sometimes you actually have hits that are uh, not uh, that, that that kind of disappears because you have a, you start showing a big database. The thing is significant, but the big database is not significant. So it is, but that's just a fact. It is because you know. You, you, if you have a big database, you're going to find things by random sometimes. So you need to be more careful. So basically, you have a bigger N, you, can, you lose, lose, lose some hits. So an example of this is basically here, you search for a one sequence, and you search only the yeast database. Yeah, so you search for this protein here. Of course, you see, this is a typical hit. I will show you an example on, on the web in a second. But... Uh, you show here, and you find itself, you see the score is 1170 with itself, so that's about super significant, and the E value is zero. But you see that the third hit here, or the fourth actually, has a score of 40, and 0 0.01 has an E value. But then if you search a big database, this one drops down here. So, score is still the same. 40, but the E value is much lower. <coughs> On the other hand, I guess that this one, this S3B1 protein, also yeast, actually exists in another, pro another uh, organism, in sh uh, well, so S3B1, that it has a better alignment. So there you find another another protein from another organism that has a better alignment and is more significant. It, also, that is not significant. That is 10 to minus 2, 10 to minus 1 even. doesn't mean that it's correct. It's, it's still, of course, a much better hit at random. It's much better than anything else. But it's just, you would have, if you did a search 10 times, you would find, on average, one hit with this score by random. So it's still quite likely that it is actually a homologous sequence, but you don't really wouldn't really like to trust it too much. So in, my, in this case, my guess is that all of these are probably homologous. Yes. Can that one move up? It, it doesn't move up. It's, it's the same. It's the same protein, but from another species. See, this is S three B one from yeast, and there, this is S three B one from so, oh, pombe, uh, schizo. Uh, oh, so, there's another yeast species. It's not exactly the same sequence. See, it's the same protein, it's the same name, but it's one species. So this has score 50, and this has score 38. So this one 38 here is actually down here somewhere, probably. But that one didn't exist in this database. So, it's just, uh, you find some other hits that are higher, and it just happens to be a related protein for some reason. Of course, this one, at well, least 47 here, should be here somewhere here. Also, it should be there, I guess. It's like the GCN one here, is there, and it still has more. Like, but you see, even this, e, all these E values go down because the database is bigger. So to have a significant hit here, you need to have 10 to score of 50, and here was not to score of 40. And the score doesn't change. So the same. There are. We will talk about those next. We will use multiple sequence alignments. You can you can actually. Use the big database to get better scores and better finding much more hits, then they will all be relevant. Um, so let's actually, I suggest we actually try a search on the web. Let's see what I will do. Hopefully it works. So, uh, NCBI. Lost. Yeah. <coughs> so this is uh, that's the protein blast there. So this is the NCBI web page, which is at least one of my favorites. Uh, any favorite sequence? Mm. Let's. 
Let's go here and try the sequence. I'll take, it, take this one, whatever it is. And, uh, and I'll blast it also if you want to. This is my favorite way with this sequence here, whatever it was. I can run here. And then I can, there are a few things to think about. I can say, I want to search against the whole database. Maybe I want to only search against the Swift pod because it's faster, it's smaller. I want to just blast P and I want to blast. And otherwise, I use all the default parameters. I can change gap panels and things like that, but I just assume that. So here, in this case, I only find itself. I only find one protein, I want it identical, it's 100% identical, and it covers everything, so that's fine itself, and nothing else. But if I go back here, I guess I can, uh, no, I cannot, I can go, um, I can do something here, I don't know, let's go back two steps. If I change to the non run put in the database, it will take longer. Uh, now it takes a few minutes to run it. Okay. So, but most likely then you see I would find many more hits. I would, I would imagine. So, so this, this is the normal way that many people use Blast. In, in the lab you could also do it online on the computer, because of course the advantage to do it by yourself on the computer is that you will have a full all right. If you want to do more than one sequence, it's easier. If you want to, if you want to do uh, how to control what you're doing, it's also easier. But if, I I if I could have my the database in my computer, would it be? I mean, could I perform this uh, calculation in the yes. this uh, time? This is more or less. I think this, the web server they have is more or less how much it would time it would take on the. So blast takes a few minutes on a normal computer on, against Unibot. So it's not. I mean, it's absolutely doable. But the problem is that you don't, you can't have the database. Well, it's not that big. Time. You can. It, it's still. Uh, I mean, if you only have the sequences, you don't have everything else. It's 50 million sequences, like maybe five gigabyte bytes or that. Oh yeah. Yeah, maybe ten. No matter. So it's not that bad actually. If you want to. Um, so it's not. It's not. It's it's it's, it's absolutely doable. I, if you go to you, you know um, current release. Unref, I guess. So Unref one hundred is everything. It's only one, if two sequences are, okay, now it's a bit, a bit more, it's compressed, it's 16 gigabytes. So it's maybe 50 gigabytes. So I mean, it's, it, it works. I mean, it's talking about laptops, it's getting full filling up, but you can have six terabytes. On a, it's like a Blu-ray movie, movie or that. So it's not, it's not, it's absolutely doable. It's not, not and, and, the, and the search maybe takes, I mean, depending on the size of the problem and how it hits you out, but it maybe takes five, ten minutes. So it's, not, so it's absolutely doable. And I don't think, I'm sure that they have uh, some special hardware here, but it's nothing. I don't know, actually, so I don't find two seats here. I find one, another one here. So you see, the second one has an E value of 1.8, which means that it's actually, by chance, I would most likely find two of these by random. So this would most likely not be a very good. Uh, um, uh, hit. It could be, but you know. Uh, on the other hand, if you look, often people talk about the identity or similarity between amino acids and alignments. So this is actually four to one percent identical, which is quite high. So in alignments here, that we actually have, you can click on, you get down, uh, we can scroll down, we have it here. So this alignment has eighteen. Uh, you see, it's four to one percent of it is identical, but randomness, random would be something like twenty percent, because you have twenty. You have uh, random with five percent because you have to random assets, but obviously you have ten, fifteen percent by random. So this is actually this part of this alignment looks quite good. It's only one gap here, or two small gaps, and it's a lot of similarities. But 
it's just a small part of it. So it's quite likely not the correct protein. It means something, I don't know. Nobody does. Or in some part, but of course this is. So you, 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 you will find it's just by random sometimes. Normally you have a cutoff of something like 10 to minus 3, 10 to minus 5, something like that. I mean, 10 to minus 3 is often a good cutoff. I think the default is 5 times 10 to minus 3. So you have 1 in 200 chance to find something in random. But it, it really depends on what, 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 if you really want to find something that potentially is similar, you can go something much higher. But if you really want to be certain, you can go something more strict. And then in, in this relationship, there is a, a problem that somehow many sequences, both in DNA and protein world, are oh, I don't know. Okay, I need to click that. So have uh, uh, what is called low complexity. So they basically repeats of very very similar amino acids and nucleotides. So you have uh, AAA long thing, and these things of course get very high score to anything else. If you have two of these repeats, they are very similar. And you have high score. But people do not believe that they are homologous. They don't have a common ancestor. So th these are causes of high scoring false positives. So if you really take, so, um, and particularly in um, DNA, half the human genome is repetitive. So you really if you want to find it. You, you, well, they are similar, but you want to find them. But it it, it really screws up your uh, statistics. So you have things like that. You have like T C T C T C T C T C T here. Then of course this is anything with a lot of T's and C's will score very well good to this. And there are several reasons to this. It's the trans transposons, the allorenos, microcyclase. And the protein level there are also uh, I mean, long uh, protein sequences that have like basically very very similar amino acids. And they are Sure, you won't find whole it, but the, the statistics doesn't really hold up to them because the, because the bias, I mean, acid bias is also too small. Even things like membrane proteins can screw up things because they are in membrane proteins you, don't, you only have in the membrane you may have six amino acid types. You only have hydrophobic ones. So for the statistics is made for twenty types. So then then anything else any membrane region will look a bit like every other membrane region. So there are, there are, there are biases like that that you need to take it into account. And. Um, uh, the trick that most people uh, often use is actually you have a, is just that you have a filter, so you have methods to detect these regions and you filter it away. So in proteins it's called SEG, in, in DNA it's called MRAPS, so you basically run the, you put X's there instead. <coughs> so that's something, and, and of course in this web server that we had, so what if I don't do that? I don't think we had it, but so here there, there is a uh, mm, I guess there is a uh, mm, 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 uh, somewhere. There should be a parameter you can put there, but I don't know really what to do now. This exclude and drop and pronounce connections. Ah, down here. Yeah. So here you can put in all cutoffs, you can put in thresholds or hits, and see here the word size used for blast, uh, the gap cost, the substitution matrix. Uh, you can some here. You can click in low complexity regions. So if I, well, here's the put a lot of I do that, and I will run it as running as this part. It's fast. That, that, that um, I think at least it should basically show my alignment down here. Well, then didn't have the part there. Uh, Uh, I didn't show the part, uh, somehow I didn't show it. Well, the difference is, of course, I only have 78% coverage. 
Yeah. So I, uh, but basically it, it ignores my part that it has low complexity. So that basically similar sequences repeated many times. It's not the perfect way, and of course it, 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 it just makes some errors, but it's, it's for a big database search, is necessary to use something like that. Quick question. Yes. Why are some uh, some letters in the alignment in large or capital letters, while others are in small? Mm. Like certain regions, you see in the query one, see if there yeah. are a few regions that are not capitalized. I think this is somehow actually what did you, I think is if you go back to your old page is that these are probably not so informative, that's the reason. This is probably low, low complexity reading. I think if you look here, it says something about that. It says something... Uh, I think it actually is this low complexity reading, doesn't it actually... It, uh, mm, I think it's lowercase stuff. Lowercase something else? Mm. Yeah, lowercase displays most max three most regions. So basically that was exactly, exactly what happened, is that that part which was not a part of the else that it was something else there. But actually, so if we find it again, go forward. So this part here was masked away. And you see, it, it has three T's, and uh, the four, five T's in this region there. So somehow it is, and it, uh, so somehow it, it, it fits this filter of not being very, very variable. So the score has probably changed a bit. I don't remember, but it basically, I mean, this shows an alignment, and this shows X, it shows a lowercase, which is more important. But basically, when you calculate the score, you can ignore this, you know, here also, there you look at isolosis. So you see that. Yeah, the score is lower, the value is also high. Yeah, so the score is probably a little bit lower, I don't remember what it was from before, but it was... Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so basically, it's basically put zero there. So that's, so it did something. But, but in this case, well, actually, you know, there's, it, 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 it shouldn't be filtered away, but for large database searches, you might get false positives. But, uh, so it's possible that this was actually the reason for why we had this other hit was with the e value 2. But I don't think we should. We can talk later. Uh, So basically, what, what, what we do when we do statement searching is asking the question: Are these two proteins homologous? Or uh, are they homologous? So the, that's uh, the. Uh, but of course, it doesn't mean that if you don't have a hit, they're not homologous. That's really to prove that is much more difficult. You really need to actually study the evolution of these two proteins much more in detail. But and as you see, there are. All these borderline hits that we can discuss if they are significant or not. And basically, yeah, you have this. It's quite simple. You put your social database and you run it, and you can put more parameters if you want to. Uh, and in general, the results of they have, this, this as a graphical summary is quite nice because often you see things like that look, look like that. It's like and the coloring is like you have a pure sequence here, and you see here you have three or four hits that are covering the whole sequence that are very similar. And then you have a lot of other hits that are probably also quite good, but they only cover one region. So either it depends on that this protein actually are, are multi domains so or different parts, or it's actually, it might also depend on this is the conserved region, and the other ones are more variable. So this is really, in this case, it's probably the first one because there are so many of them. But sometimes it's just alignments are always going to be have more variation at the ends because it's just the way it is, and it's always going to be, as it was cut off at zero, you're going to. If you have one good part, you're going to stop somewhere. So often, if you have an if you didn't have this top hit, you would have a short alignment with this part here, but you didn't know you didn't know what the beginning was. Because there are more variations at the end, so for many reasons. And then you have the list of hits, and then you have the alignments you can look at, and you get this is actually a very similar output as you get if you run it on your you know, computer. 
I think the default you don't get is graphics, but it's uh, but the list here is very very similar. So in case you had a protein with two variables of which was separated by a variable segment, you wouldn't be able to see them, right? If you have uh, uh, if you have if you have yeah, so if you have a protein that is basically has like one domain like that, and then something by a variable, and another domain like this. And of course, if, if you have a very similar protein in your database, but assume that was you align all the way, but that's maybe, assume you, you don't have that, you might find things here, uh, see even that this very, and you find things here, but, of course, but you don't, you, in BLAST you can have two hits to the same protein. So say, assume that the next protein actually has this domain here, but then it has a very, very big thing here that's much longer, and then have another part here. You will find this is protein. This is your query protein, this is main protein A, and then you have protein A here, you have this part here, but you also have protein A here down here, this part here, but you might not find that part in the protein. Mean. Yeah. Asin protein may appear two times in the yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in principle, can. I don't know really exactly how to filter it, but in principle, yes. Because they are, I mean, that, that could very, very likely happen, because you could have two parts that lie together. I mean, it's not that common, but it's because uh, most times they are similar. We find it's part in between also, but but certainly you can have further down. They cannot overlap. I think I think there are some filters by that, but but uh, of course then of course you might exist to the B that only have this to the C that only exist here. But that's also it's more more common. But but if, if there is some big insertion here in the middle that may makes it hard to align the whole thing, and that's. Uh, there are cases we have like circular mutations. You have a protein that starts like that, and then actually that part has moved over there, and then, you, then, then you, the alignment is, of course, doesn't take that into account. So there are, there are examples. Oh, oh, I mean, there are, there are evolution examples when this has happened, but the most problem in the most cases these are quite take some time in evolution, so they are quite distant, so they're hard to align in there. But certainly, it, it can happen. You align parts with with other parts. So this is this is why why it's very important to do look at that. But this, is, but this is kind of a common thing. So you have a set of hits here, hey maybe something that's filtered out, and you have a set of things here that are lower scores, and you go further further down. Um, yeah, so as I said this, you have these blast regions, and you have this here. In this example, actually, it's marked with X, but nowadays it seems to mark with lower cases. And it's for big database searches. It's often well, it didn't, it didn't seem to be was on by default. So I guess they have maybe better ways to do it. But if, if you search something, you really need it. And you have things here. You see all the E's you have here. They are kind of low complexity. So anything with a lot of E's then will have a score, even if it's not null related. Hmm. Yeah, of course, it's just repeating of your local sequences. So basically, the same example as we had here. So if you have, of course, if you have A here, you have B aligned here and C aligned here, it doesn't mean that B and C are related. So you have to look at the alignment. So this is really what, you can have parts that are local alignments. It doesn't mean that B and C are, or these two and three are related. And uh, so there have been people who have, you, you jump from A to B and you have five more sequences further away by jumping between them, but it's. Uh, uh, it doesn't really work, so you have to you have to keep uh, keep your alignments. So now I think uh, the five um, math students you have uh, have you at least have a lab now. And now I mean, I, and it's I mean it's, it's a bit full in the computer room today. So you have, you have a lab for the next two and a half hours or something like that, and then. Uh, in the meantime, the, you put the factory people. We have Dan Dale here giving a talk in 15 minutes, I think. And uh, then uh, you have lab in Oslo. And then tomorrow, it starts at 10.30. I think it will usually be 10, but uh, I have a meeting, so I cannot be here before 10.30. So that's, uh, I'll try to squeeze in, in one hour for five minutes more.